portal. In this video, we're going to go over the framework used to progress strength training exercises. We're going to look at this from a movement standpoint. So let's get started by looking at the performance pyramid. You'll see at the base of the pyramid, we have movement. This is the largest block. There's a small buffer zone on either side underneath strength, power, and endurance. So we want to develop the capacity to move so it is safe and we can effectively progress through strength, power, and endurance training. So to get started here, you're going to see a variety of different categories. We have controlling the spine, we have hip hinges, we've got squats, single leg patterns, horizontal pushing and pulling, and vertical pushing and pulling. So regardless of who walks through the door of the training center, we focus on controlling the spine first. This gives us a lot of information as to where we're going to start a person in their training routine. So you'll see level one, level two, and level three categories here. Each category indicates the complexity of the drills. So we like to see people progress through the level one category of controlling the spine before we move into more traditional weight training. So I'll give you a quick overview of what some of these exercises look like. So level one, to get started, flexion, extension, and neutral. We simply want to see that you're able to feel these different positions and understand these different positions before we're going to look at loading the body with any kind of weight. So a flexion position is rounded, an extension position is arched, and then a neutral position basically holds the natural curvatures of the spine. So we use a dowel to cue this where the head, the upper back, and tailbone are in contact, where you see a small gap between the lower back and the dowel. So this shows some natural curvatures in the spine. From here, once these positions are understood, then we can move into stiffening the core. So it's important to learn how to stiffen the core. As soon as we add weight to the body, then we need to brace the position to hold the desired posture. So without learning how to stiffen the core, we're putting ourselves in a position where we may fall out of what is safe and effective for a given exercise. Once this is understood, then we move into a dead bug. So this is where we set things in motion. With a dead bug, your back is on the ground, your opposite arm and opposite leg are going to move, so we're moving at the limbs while maintaining a neutral spine. So what I want to illustrate here is the progressive nature of the movements. So we start relatively simple, and we slowly make these things more complicated, adding more variables uh, for you to control your body. So we like to see people get through these level one control in the spine positions, as I had said, before we get into traditional strength training. Now within each one of these blocks, and I'm just gonna illustrate one more for you. So the hip hinge. <clears throat> we have fundamentals in each block that relate to the exercises within that category. So for a hip hinge, this is a critical movement to understand for deadlift patterns, cleans, snatches. Without this fundamental movement, it's going to be very challenging to effectively express any of these other exercises. So to get started in the hip hinge category, we start with a dowel on the back. The head, upper back, and tailbone are all in contact, but we sit back and maintain a neutral spine. So you'll see here why it's important to learn how to control the spine before we move into a movement like this. This is slightly more complex. Uh, it's more common for people to lose their position if we start here rather than if we start with the basics of controlling the spine. So it actually, in the long run, allows us to progress much faster than if we started with these more complex movements. From here, you'll see how the kettlebell hip hinge ties into what we had also covered in the fundamentals of controlling the spine. So once we add load to the body, then it becomes important to learn how to stiffen the trunk and the core muscles to maintain posture. So the heavier this weight gets, the more stiffening is going to have to happen to maintain your position. So with strength training, it's really important to learn how to hold tension in the appropriate areas while allowing the correct joints to move through the motion. So as we progress through these level one exercises, we develop some capacity uh, for strength. And once we hit critical standards uh, within these different movements, then 
we allow uh, for these next exercises to make an appearance in programming. So again, purely from a movement standpoint, this is how we program uh, the exercises. We also have strength standards, uh, power standards that we would use within each of these categories. Uh, but we've used this uh, method successfully for the past 10 uh, years where it's constantly evolved and brought us to a point where we've helped athletes progress to an elite level. We've helped the general population uh, improve fitness while reducing pain in the body simply by cleaning up movement patterns and developing strength in the muscles that are intended for certain movements. So if you have any other questions, please reach out. We are always available and look forward to meeting you in person or coaching you through the internet.